and we're live. Okay. So welcome to Cup of Tea. Um, this is the first of the Tea for Two Chitty Chats. Got my sister here. I am Kezia. Sister Krista, say hello. 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 Um, so these are little chitty chats that we're having. And of course, here's the tea. What kind of tea do you have today? I have English breakfast. I have Tahitian vanilla herbal. Mm. That sounds Rather. delicious. Delicious. They're all exceedingly spoiled, I find. <laughs> Margaret is always up trees and under furniture. Single, barely, heard a single, barely had a single word from Marianne. Word from Marianne. <laughs> uh, my dear Fanny, they just lost their father. <laughs> no, it was, the lo it was a longer pause. Uh, uh, my dear Fanny, my they, dear just Fanny lost their, they just lost their father. Their lives will never their be the same again. Their lives will never be the same again. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I wrote down a few a few things, the topics, the things to to talk about. I um, love it. Things that I have been having fun with recently, although most of them revolve around North and South, and I don't think you've seen the whole. I have not I seen the whole know. thing, but you've got me on that kiss. Oh, well, you know that's. That is like the best BBC miniseries kiss. And if you look on YouTube, you'll see like montages of period drama kisses. No. None of them. Can North and South. Everything, like everything just pales in comparison. Yes. So Bravo. I did bring the book. Like I brought the book. This is my copy, physical copy of the original book by Elizabeth Gaskell, North and South. Not to be confused with the Patrick Swayze, like revolutionary, American Revolutionary War, North and South. Same name, completely different story. Oh, yeah. That's not even. Yes, Although, but it's, that's it's interesting. Confused. Like, Patrick, like the, <clears throat> I remember that was a TV miniseries, right? Yes. It was North like you went in the 80s. 80s. Yeah, it was in the 80s. It was a big deal. It's like, are you watching North and South? It's like, are you watching Roots? You know? Anyway, you also don't know about Roots. roots. I, don't, I don't know about I, Roots. It's Kunta Kinte. That was from Roots. Kunta Kinte? Kunta Kinte. You know, okay. Never mind. I, we're we're doing Elizabeth Gaskell. We're not even talking about roots. Yeah. So. Okay. So Elizabeth Gaskell, and I got back into reading some fan fiction. So a couple of fan fiction that I was actually looking at on fanfiction.net that I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the original North and South fan fictions was called that I enjoyed was Suppression. Is the name of it Suppression? Suppression. <laughs> Yes. I'm sorry, I, but that, that title sounds it, way too close to depression, and I don't want to be in that. It sounds weird, but hang on, hang on. Let me find it for you, because okay. I, I want to read you the, the um, not the introduction, but the, the synopsis. Okay, you're going to have to put a link to this in the show notes. I'll put a link to it in the bottom, but I wanted to, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it matters. Nothing matters. We're having a chitty chat. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> That's right. Tea. That's right. Rather. Oh man. I wish I had the thing straight up. I just I just had it up. But um let's see. Well, okay. The other one the other one I have up already, Midnight Delusions. And I <laughs> Again, delusion. <laughs> it's like all of this is modeled over like they're all of these titles like sound like psychological conditions that people have <laughs> midnight delusion sounds like it would cause you to gain a lot of weight it's like like midnight snacking like midnight snacking yes exactly <laughs> yeah so this one i thought is one of the best um written fan fictions that i found on okay um, of, of elizabeth gaskell's north and of south of elizabeth gaskell's north and south um, on fanfiction.net, like on the mm -hmm. website. And 
like I was telling you before, 51,000 words. So it's basically like a novel, seven chapters. It's, it's, a, it's a short a novel. Long, it's a novella, yeah. Yeah, basically. like a short, yeah. So I was rereading the end of that. Okay, so her first chapter, but, you know, her first chapter, I'm guessing it's a woman who wrote this. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, like, divvied up into several sections. Did you already so, say the author of Midnight Confessions or Midnight Delusions or Midnight whatever it Delusions was? Midnight Delusions by Suki Bill. Suki Bill. All one word? S, it might be S00 or S O O. But you're still K gonna have a link to it in the description so that they can find yes. it. K I E B I L L, all one word. Suki it's, Bill. Yes. It's it's just the ha the the handle. The the okay. username. North and South Which fan fiction usually, continue. Usually, most of the time, does not make sense. Yes. So why do you like this? So my favorite part is the end of, near the end of this um, chapter, it's so cute. Margaret goes to stay, or her dad dies. The, the story leaves off, her dad dies. Her dad dies. It was so cute. <laughs> Her mom had already died. Her brother came. Her brother is like a mute mutant, not a mutant, mutineer. Mutant. Not. Um, he was in the mutant, navy. Mutant. Yeah, and, a mutineer. What would you call it? Somebody. He, he was uh, part of a mutiny. Probably. A yeah. Mutiny. There you go. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Part of a mutiny. He kind of talked against like. Got some of the men to be against the captain of the ship because the right. captain was being a stupid. Her, he was being mean to the people, the, yes. the workers. Anyway, so he fled to Spain, South America, or Spain spine, for a while. Spine, they're all in spine. Spine, they're all in spine. Am I in spine? <laughs> Two lemons and a banana. <laughs> so her brother is not in the country. Her mom dies. Now her dad dies, and her only other family is in London. So. That's where this keeps off. Right before she leaves London, she goes to stay at the Thornton's house. The, oh, and then, the Thornton. I thought you were like singular Thornton at the Thornton. And sorry. Thornton. Grammar the Thorntons. The Thorntons. Yeah. At the Thorntons. You know, we could probably talk about some interesting. Uh, I think, you know what? I think the apostrophe S. I think the possessive S, I think that might be left over from Northern British English. I just got done with this linguistics class and they were talking oh, yeah, about- yeah, you were telling me about that. Yeah, there were certain pieces of, uh, of our language in American English that we use these days that specifically were left over from Northern English. And that's a big part of the, of the film, at least, North and South, because they talk about the- um, well, they don't really talk about it, but it's clear that there's a difference in accent, you know? And of course well, the Northern northerners- accent, Southern, Southern accent. Right, so the Northerners are, are seen as this working class that are, you know, stupider. Lots of contractions. Lots of contractions and, you know, they have, they have harder R's and stuff. Whereas the Southerners are like supposedly more sophisticated, which I think is, in, it is just interesting. Yes. Even though Thornton, it's just Thornton. There's no S. Oh, yeah, but you, but if if you're saying Thorntons, oh, plural, plural, and then a possessive, and then possessive. That's why I'm saying over to the oh. Thorntonses. Okay, house. Thorntons. Anyway, so she was staying at the Thorntonses. Sorry. Yes. Turned everything. And then it was kind of there was a little bit of a, a spooky element where she thought there was a ghost in the house because at night she would hear footsteps in the hallway in the corridor and then one night she finally stepped outside her door to see what was there and she went to the top of the stairs and behold, I like your narrator voice <laughs> behold a woman behold. was at the bottom of the stairs who was it the ghost was at the bottom of the stairs? It was the servant who sleeps walk, sleepwalks. Dun, dun, dun. So she hurries back to her room, but is flustered and goes into the wrong bedroom, but doesn't realize you know what, really? until she All jumps they gotta into watch the out. bed. 
What? <laughs> you got to watch out for those late night flusters. That's right. Once the flusters <laughs> get you, you're going to end up in bed with Mr. Thornton. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Hey, that's a nice little fluster. So she hey. gets into the bed and realizes under the covers and think and say, oh, there is already a body in this bed. What is this? <laughs> Oh no, I went into the wrong bedroom. There's already a body in this bed. <laughs> <laughs> and then Sorry, continue. Um, <laughs> the way you're phrasing oh. it, you're cracking me up. <laughs> Thornton's asleep, but he gets woken up by her and and he thinks like instinctively, oh, it's like a burglar or someone trying to to mm -hmm. attack me. And so he like pulls her her under him and like pins her down and then because that's like, what you do with a burglar geez she, he doesn't punch her down. because <laughs> what i want to do when a burglar slips into my bed i just want to pin him down underneath me because i know that at least my weight could crush him to death slowly hey he's 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 mr Ter strong mill owner okay cotton mill owner He's not, look, it, what he's going to do is he's going to drop kick that SOB out of his bed. That's what he's going to do. He's It's going to be like to the nose and then like toss him across the room because he's a mill worker dude. And yes. then he's going to come over and be like, get out of my house. And then he would realize that it was Elizabeth and that he just smashed Margaret. her nose in. Whoever Margaret, it is. It's always Elizabeth. It's always Elizabeth. They're all Elizabeth. So that's my, that, by the way, that's my second, I have a second topic to talk to. But after this one, so this okay, I'll scene, let you finish. he, you know, he's all love struck with her, but, you know, kind of making her believe that he doesn't care for her anymore because he's so hurt and his heart is broken because she's, she said, you know, I don't like you. F you. Right. <laughs> So he he would dream about her at night. So he thought that, you know, he once he realized it was her, he's like, oh, it must be one of my dreams. <laughs> but then they start. Then she starts meeting him in bed night after night. No, this is all the same night, okay? This oh, is all one the night. Same Sorry, I was going to be okay? like, if you keep getting flustered every day, it's like your fault. Here, I'll, I'll read it. Margaret had come to his room because she was scared and he had, oh, okay. So she... They kind of start to kiss and he and like feel each other up, right? Because <laughs> that's what you do with burglars. He nuzzled the valley of her breasts and lightly bit on one of her nipples through her nightgown, making her whimper. And oh my gosh. When she opened her eyes, she found his face inches away from her, one of his hands gently caressing her cheek, still thinking it's a dream. And so the thing with the dream, he's like, once I kiss her, that's when the dream poof disappears. So right. he says he's kissing until the end. And then she, her body starts responding to him and they don't get all the way there. But after they start kissing, then I'll skip ahead. But Margaret didn't vanish after they kissed. At least all not in the way he was expecting. Real. The combination of his kiss and the feel of his body against hers threw her last bit of common sense out, out the window. Bye bye, common sense. Little... Stop being <laughs> a burglar. <laughs> <laughs> and then she feel, and then he's like, "Oh wait, this isn't a dream." Hey, stop, <laughs> Margaret, my love, stop. He pleaded painfully, contracting his own work. Con contradicting his own words by reciprocating her advances with more kisses. Mustering all his self-control, he grasped Stop. her chin and Stop. forced himself to pull away from her. And then she gets embarrassed that she kind of... <laughs> she gets all embarrassed and steps away and she's like, I've never done this before. I'm sorry that I did this. She, he's like, no, don't feel sorry. It's not your fault because, you know, Two to tango, right? Takes two. <laughs> it takes but, two to have a wet dream in the middle of the night when you think it, a burglar's in your bed. <laughs> it takes two. I can't allow you to excuse my appalling behavior, Mr. Thornton. I let you because I wanted to. 
She admitted mortified. Mortified. And then they basically, like, confess that they loved each other. And it's so cute. A little relaxed by his words, she closed her eyes and allowed herself to enjoy the feeling of his strong arms around her. And then she's like, you must know that those other two guys, like this Henry Lennox dude, I never cared for him. And he's like, yeah. Well, he didn't say anything. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you must know by now that you have no business in London or anywhere else but here. You belong to me, he said, kissing her lips possessively in this room. Letting himself, he added, letting himself fall back onto the mattress with her on top in this bed. He finished kissing her again. She bed. reciprocated, but pushed away after a few seconds. Mr. Thornton. With this is, bed, I be wed. <laughs> with this bed, uh, exactly. Mr. Thornton, this is serious, she said, trying to regain her composure. This is serious. This and is like, like her oh, kind of joking. Attack. Like, joke, at least, this is serious. He's like, oh, very serious, Miss Hale. He buried oh, his face so in her serious. throat and found it amusing that she was still addressing him formally. <laughs> Just that so you know, cute. I've never cared for Henry Lennox, she said, <laughs> feeling him smile against her neck. As for the other gentleman, Thornton leaned back to hear her, his smile gone. Now, this gentleman was the one that he, that Thornton saw late at night, Mar saw Margaret with him. Mm -hmm. um, it was her brother. That's the they one that was actually in the real story. Yes, yes. Embracing at the station late at night. Well, you're going to have to just tell people to like read this story. You're going to end up reading the whole story on the. Nope. I'm just reading the last like of the first chapter. There's like way oh, more. better stuff. Okay. They're I'll let you finish. Stuff. We have one other thing we were good because we didn't want to keep, we didn't want this conversation to get too I long. I know, not too long. But I'm yes, already out of tea and I'm out of like, macaroni. I'm so hungry. This other gentleman, his name is Frederick and he's my brother. He's like, oh, your brother? All relieved. Relief and disbelief. Um, and then he interrupted her by kissing them, kissing her again. And then they heard a noise. Them, in the, her and her brother. Yes. Um, and then they, they heard a noise in the, you know, the servant making noises in the, the hallway yes. again. He's like, yeah, that's, uh, that's probably Anna, the servant, waking up to prepare breakfast. She's like, I got to go. <laughs> yeah, because so, I can't be in here. I can't be seen in your bedroom, especially mm -hmm. making out with you in your bedroom. Yeah, so that's the she end was of, like, haven't you ever seen Downton Abbey? That would be a bad thing. I'd have to kill you. Because <laughs> it's Downton Abbey. <laughs> Everyone dies on that show. But do you get it? Like, what was it? Lady Mary? She had sex with that guy in her bedroom and then he died. That's the funniest thing you've ever said. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they actually had sex, did they? I think they I think, did. I think he just kind of came onto her and then he just passed out and died. Uh, I, I, I think, I think they might have been. In, I don't know. I don't know. I think they might have been in the middle of having sex. But still. When he died. No, to kill and he him. had a heart attack. That's so funny. So that's the end of the first chapter, and that's my favorite scene ever. Okay. So far. Right. It's a winner. It's a winner. And I'll leave a link to that for everybody okay. to enjoy and read that because it, it was very delightful. That was a fantastic cup of tea, and that was a fun shit. Are you show. done with your tea? I made a giant cup. I know, but we're not having an hour-long discussion. I thought we were having a 10-minute chat. I'm in the middle of I'm in the middle of my macaroni and cheese. <laughs> How long has this been going? Okay, so the next thing I wanted to say was back to Pride and Prejudice, and I was. How I long has this been going? What? How long have we been going? I don't know. It doesn't. It okay. doesn't tell me. Okay. And I haven't been keeping track of time. Whatever. So okay. going back to the Pride and Prejudice, I found on Instagram. Um, a blog that's it was something like uh, finding a miss finding my Mr. Darcy in a world of Wickhams. 
Oh, oh, I and think it was I actually saw her very, on Instagram. It was actually a very, um, I, I scrolled through, I'll leave a link to that blog below too. Um, okay. I scrolled through some of the recent posts and it's actually pretty clever. You know, it's kind of like a, like a modern dating, um, like she equates herself like a, a modern Elizabeth Bennett trying to find uh -huh. a, a modern Mr. Darcy in a world full of modern Mr. Wickham's. But, um, so did, did she follow you? Cause here we've got, we've got cup of tea. She, oh yeah. Cup of tea on Instagram. She, Instagram. Um, I followed through her page cause she liked one of the posts. I think she liked today's post. Right. Um, but I thought it was clever and that made me think, you know, why is Pride and Prejudice, that story, so what's the hype about it? And why right. is it why is it considered such a classic? Are you trying to ask me? I'm asking um, you. Okay, so I'm a writer. Um, that's why this is so fun for me is because yeah. I get to examine plot and language and stuff like that. I think Pride and Prejudice, uh, I mean, there's millions of essays on why it's so quintessential. Um, I think the one thing is, is that it's very British. That's why I think people like it. Another thing is, it's also very relatable uh, cross-culturally, which is a surprise. Um, uh, you know, like uh, Indian culture, it's it translates yeah, like well. Yeah, like Bollywood. Yeah, like Bollywood did a version of it. I mean, it's very, for, for industrialized nations, it's, um, especially for the plight of women, it's very relatable. It's about, you know, losing your reputation as a woman, maintaining your reputation, um, I think it's relatable to younger people because it deals with, oh, my parents are so embarrassing. And then there's also the ultimate unattainable hot guy. I mean, that theme just goes, it's just, it's universal. <laughs> and then there's, and then there's the whole idea of like feeling awkward and being awkward uh, and people positioning, you know, people in power trying to get what they want out of situations. I just think um, it's something that kind of transcends time and for some reason just sticks around. That's why I think it's so, that's why I think it's so popular and why I think it's for best. Also, it's just very well written and the language is amazing and the humor is just so layered and nuanced. Um, and, and in terms of literature, like the characters are wonderful. They're very full and developed and they, they all have flaws, but they all have, um, good parts too. And, um, they're all damaged. Like even some of the tertiary characters, like, um, Lady Catherine de Bourgh, like she has her own little bone. It's like, even in like five lines, it's like, she's got this whole history with her daughter and how her daughter's sick. And I wonder, I'm like, how did her daughter get sick? And like, what kind of sick is she really? Of the sickly you know? constitution. Exactly. What does that mean? Like, did her mom kind of encourage that sickly constitution? Like, or, you know, there's like all this cool backstory. I also think that that's why there's so much fan fiction that ends up popping out of at least Jane Austen stuff is because her characters are so wonderful to experience and they have these backstories that you never really go into. And so there's lots of different ways you can make it spin off or lots of different ways you can get up to the actual story. That's why, that's what I think. I think it's good writing. I think she tapped into a universal theme, at least for Western societies, you know, industrialized societies. The whole thing about women needing a husband and what marriage is really for and stuff like that. Well, I just wonder if there's other, I was thinking, well, is the, the, um, the general storyline of Pride and Prejudice is the same in a lot of other, other stories like, um, like a North and South, like, 
right. just in a different social context in a different time of history or um what's that i guess it wouldn't be like a kind of like a romeo and juliet sort of a thing so is kind it of the, i would like say pride and prejudice isn't quite romeo and juliet but i get what you're saying well no not the story but they're like romeo and juliet is like the same type of thing where there's different where it's like um Oh, it's a story that's been around for a really, really, really long yeah, time. Cultures, it's, it's, um, like, I wouldn't so much it's, say that. Like, it's, okay. Pride and Prejudice is not, a, is not exactly like Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet legit had been around a long time. Like, it was a retelling when Shakespeare did it. So, um, that really has been around a long time. I think Pride and Prejudice ended up being a classic because because she hit the nail on the head really i think that pride and prejudice will continue to be told and retold i think that with jane austen it was sort of the beginning of something somehow she was able to get all of these really wonderful elements like uh you know um attention between the sexes and class and family dynamics and you know marriage and love and fate um stuff like that she was able to get it all into one one big one two punch men taking so off their like shirts the diving of, into pools stuff like that the quality of the writing and the depthness of the characters that's what made it that's what makes it so good pretty much that and and the and the way she crafted the plot it just hit it i mean i finally got around to watching love and friendship this weekend which is a you know that was what like a bbc the, version was, of was lady one susan of Austin book i, I yeah, think it's it lady was susan lady susan yeah yes so <clears throat> that was not that wasn't quite as good i can see why that hasn't been made into a film yet but Sense and Sensibility, very good. And Pride and Prejudice, also very good. And I think that that's why those two have really been, have really been her most popular ones. Um, Lady Susan, at least the way, because I haven't read the books, um, but the film, Lady Susan, I, it was well enough acted, I suppose, and there were some interesting elements in there, but it seemed to be it seemed to be missing something. It, it didn't, yeah. like Lady Susan was too overbearing. There wasn't enough tension. There was no, there were no male figures to keep her in check. It's like she had free reign over everybody. It's like, yes. and this is the way Lady Susan destroys everyone's lives and gets whatever she wants. You know, it's like, okay. Yes, anyway. I thought so too. I actually mm -hmm. thought Kate Beckinsale had too many lines. Oh, I agree. Not only that, but they like omitted like 90% of these conversations that she had with this young man. And I'm like, that is the whole point, BBC. I mean, I know everything's going to short form, but I honestly would have preferred that they this extended. This wasn't BBC. It was Amazon. Oh, it was Amazon. Okay. Well, that's probably why, film. honestly. Because if it had been produced by the BBC, I would imagine, like, I, I'll take a mini series. Like, I will take a six-hour Lady Susan. You've got to give me time to enjoy it. That's, I think, what was so phenomenal about the 95, the, 1995 the Pride and Prejudice. 2006, the 2006 Pride and Prejudice, the one with uh, Kira Knightley. That was yeah. phenomenal because they were able to fit into two and a half hours what we, what we were used to getting in six hours. Even though you were still missing some things. Yes, you were missing a lot of really cool language. Like uh, the whole, like the, the, um, uh, the proposal. You're missing a few yeah, things. Or that... Like the proposal from um, Mr. Collins, his full proposal is ridiculous. Yes. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. The language is wonderful. Um, yeah, anyway. I could go mm -hmm. on and on. Okay, well, we'll end it there. Thank you for joining for my okay. kitty chat. And maybe we'll, we'll do this monthly. No How about that? 
Sounds great. Or whenever we feel like it, because this is fun. Yeah. I love talking about literature and uh, movies. Do you yes. have a favorite quote since I since I shared a quote at the beginning that from a movie? What's your current favorite quote from a from a movie right now? Um from from a movie. From from one of the period drama movies. Let's see, I'm trying to think of a of one. You know how I am of trying to think something off the top of my head. You gotta get Oh yeah, that. sorry. It was just going through my head. <clears throat> Stuff from Sense and Sensibility goes through my head all the time. Which, well, by the way, is one that I think of all the time. Guess. The um, Charlotte's dad. Uh, yeah. Pride and Prejudice. Capital. 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 I think. What does that mean, by the way? Let's inform um, our audience if they don't know. It's. It means like like it's it's good. Things are going good. I think of it, it like in when you think of like money capital that that's like a good thing you want capital and so I think you know capital you know um, you know how I am with words uh, <laughs> well, I'm looking it up good things uh, What's this? that's probably not the, the best I think it may oh and I even misspelled it how in the world am I supposed to google it if I misspell it Capital. <laughs> what does capital? What does capital mean in Spanish? Um, most important city, wealth in the form of money. Um, you can use it as an adjective. It's he's probably using it as an adjective, right? Capital versus capital. Yeah, capital. Um, capital, yes, okay, so he would be, yes, it's an exclamation in British English. Yeah. Capital, meaning, um, and it's also, okay, so I'm guessing it's the third, okay, so you've got liable to the death penalty, it's not that. The second one is large in size and form used to begin, okay, no, 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 that's the letter of the alphabet. Third is informal, dated, British English, excellent. That's yes. what it means. Capital. Yeah, it means go. excellent. Yes. <laughs> so there you go. Capital. Very good. Well, so I've enjoyed if you'd like to follow me, I am now on Instagram. Cup of tea dot cup. No, all one word. Cup of tea. K C S. Kezia Carter Studio. And that's so C U P P A T E A. C U P P A T E A K C S. That's my handle on Instagram. On Instagram. And I'll leave a link yes. below on my Instagram. It'll be fun to and see if anybody comments. We, we should ask them what, what their favorite line from a film is. I know. Comment what your favorite line from a film is. Period films. Period dramas. Happily ever afters. Unrequited love. That's right. This was fun. All right. Talk to you later. Okay, see bye. You okay, bye.